Welcome to the 8th edition of World Intellectual Property Forum. outset would like to express my gratitude and thank the organizers for inviting me to share my views on IP licensing, the best tool to commercialize through this esteemed forum WIPA. So basically what is meant by commercialization of intellectual property rights? Commercialization of intellectual property rights simply means putting your invention into practice to reap economic benefits. As we all are aware, intellectual property is the backbone of the corporate world. IP licensing is a vital component of business strategy as it is a frequently used means of exploitation of IP. Licensing of IP rights is an effective tool for achieving various business goals including starting, innovating and expanding business. Licensing helps an enterprise to commercialize its IP or expand its operations into new markets more effectively and with greater ease than on its own. IP licensing can provide companies with additional revenue streams enable them to raise brand awareness or and enhance their reputation and extend their uh, brands into new markets and geographies. However, if IP ownership or validity is unclear, it can also pose significant financial and business risk. It's important how to develop an effective business strategy. So what's licensing? The word license has been derived from the Latin term Licentia, which means freedom or liberty. To a layman, a license means a permission to use another's property. To the license, the license, the licensee is a is given a right to make specified use without which he would be liable for infringement of the licensor's property rights. An owner of intellectual property can grant another person the right or permission to to make use or sell property or items embodying or covered by this IP by means of a contractual license. For license agreement uh, in India, for patent licensing in India, it is necessary for the license to be reduced in, in writing. A license agreement is a document executed between two or more parties evidencing the terms and conditions of, of such patent licensing in India. A license may apply to any type of IP that is be it trademark, patent, copyright, design and so on and so forth. Under the license, the licensor maintains title in the IP and the licensee is authorized to make use of the IP only in accordance with the terms and conditions of the license. Licensing intellectual property to a third party is the most common modality and technology transfer leading to, towards commercialization. There are various modes of licensing strategy which includes exclusive license for example uh, license uh, which means that a single licensee has the right to use the IP. Another type of license is sole licensing which means a sole licensee and the IP owner has the right to use the IP. Again non-exclusive license which means that several licensees have the right to use the IP. Also when you license your IP to another person it is called out licensing. However, on some occasions, it may be that you need to gain a license to use someone else's IP. This is called in-licensing. It is more likely that a spin-out company or an industrial partner is going to be in a position where they need to in-license another person's IP. Licensing is a tool for commercial exploitation of IP, is one of the most sought after and has multiple benefits like it's a continuous source of revenue for the licensor. It expands customer awareness and reach of the IP. Licensing overseas helps to overcome the barriers involved in negotiating local government regulations and allows those who are familiar with local markets to maximize returns from the licensed product. A license, be it exclusive or non-exclusive, may ultimately deliver more money than any kind of assignment. 
and last but not the least infringement or revocation proceedings are also avoided especially when a potential licensee is already selling a possibly uh, infringing product licensing does have its own challenges as well in case of a non exclusive license where there is an in infringing third party the ip owner would be responsible for commencing an infringement action the performance of a license may be difficult to monitor license Licenses require constant attention and diligence to ensure effectiveness. In case of exclusive license, the IP owner cannot grant license to other parties and cannot utilize the IP by itself. Thus, if the exclusive licensee is not chosen effectively, the value of the IP may diminish or not entail deserving returns. So, in order to avoid ambiguity, a license agreement must be very well drafted to provide details of the exact rights provi being provided and the restrictions being imposed on the licensee. An IP license agreement has certain integral parts, namely definition of the license property, the geographical locations for which license is being granted, a right given to the licensee to sublicense the IP granted to it clauses regarding revocation of the license royalty or consideration for the grant of the license dispute resolution termination uh, <clears throat> and so on and so forth the drafting of the license agreement and inclusion of certain license terms are essential to ensure that the licensee cannot claim the that the ip has been assigned to it there are numerous instances where the licensor has granted an exclusive license and the licensee has claimed that the same is an assignment of the IP. In various decisions, the Indian courts have looked at the substance of the contract and more specifically, the clauses on royalty payment to determine whether a transfer would be treated as an assignment or an exclusive license. So one has to be very particular when such agreements are being finalized and executed. Once a license agreement is proposed to be executed, the next question that arises is whether the license agreement needs to be mandatorily registered. If yes, then what are the repercussions or the consequences of non-registration? The Patents Act, the Trademarks Act, the Designs Act mandate the registration of license agreement, whereas Copyright Act does not mandate such uh, registration. Likewise, intellectual property documents also uh, the uh, when involves transfer of IP rights in the form of licenses attracts Indian Stamp Act and since the rate of stamp duty varies from state to state prior to execution of the license agreement it is important to understand the prevailing duty uh, rates and determine if benefit of execution in a particular state can be availed uh, by it under such under the Indian Stamp Act, if adequate stamp duty has not been paid on a document, such document cannot be admitted in evidence for any purpose, nor can it be acted upon. So these are few basic points which one should be mindful of when opting for licensing as a tool for commercialization of its IP. And finally, to sum up, uh, the, at the end of uh, at the end of it all the way, the owner of an IP wants to commercially Exploit the IP is based on multiple factors such as whether the IP is a strong or weak, whether it could be successfully protected against knockoffs, how relevant or important it is for the consumer, what is the duration for which the protection exists, the extent of market utilization of the IP, etc. Therefore, it is not an easy decision to make and has to be kept and has to be taken by keeping in mind multiple factors. Thus, it should be imperative upon the licensor, licensee or any third party to a contractual agreement of commercial utilization of IP to ensure that a thorough due diligence and IP of the audit IP, uh, audit of the IP has been done to reach the correct valuation of the IP. This would create transparency between the parties and leads to a healthier contractual relationship. IP needs to be guarded stridently and should ensure that maximum benefits are reaped out of it until it falls into public domain. 
the contracting party should thoroughly negotiate their inter se agreements to avoid any pitfall towards commercial exploitation of ip i hope this piece of information would have been helpful for the audience and in case of any questions or queries you can write me back at rashmi.mishra at acg-world.com. So at the end, I would again express my gratitude to the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.